Hi and welcome to Chris Ryan Golf and I'm not at the Belfry today. I've come down the road, uh, only a short distance from the Belfry, to a golf club called Drayton Park where the head professional is John Watts. John, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Uh, me and John have known each other for ooh, 10 years over? A bit more than Probably that, a bit yeah. more than 10 years. Uh, John has been previous at the Belfry, uh, but he's moved down the road to, say, to Drayton. Um, and we've come to see John today because he's got this fantastic swing studio. Um, lovely place that you've built. Yep. Since being here, um, we've got GC2 down here, which is the launch rider that John uses. Uh, and as you can see, it's linked up through a projector, so we get this great sort of image of the driving range. Uh, and I say, really great space, especially when it is December in the UK and it's freezing <laughs> yeah. outside and you need a space to coach. So, what I thought we'd do today is talk a little bit about trying to lower the ball flight. Uh, we're talking a little bit more with irons, um, and why you might need to lower the ball flight is, as I say, it's December in the UK now. Uh, we get in a lot of wind at the moment. Last certainly last few weeks, last month wind, isn't it? or so, yeah, it's been really, really windy. A lot of wind. So the golfers out there who can control the ball flight are probably going to have a little bit more success in the golf course, and they're going to find that they can manage their game a little bit around the golf course. So just before we go into some of the things that we might do, there's really only three things that you're trying to do in order to lower the ball flight. We're trying to reduce the launch angle, so that's lowering the angle which the ball takes off at. We're trying to reduce the spin that's on the golf ball, and we're trying to reduce the speed that the golf ball has. Okay, if we can do those three things, we can lower the ball flight. So, impact. What needs to change in impact, John, if we're gonna lower the ball flight? We wanna be creating a, a more negative angle of attack, so we're actually effectively hitting down on the golf ball yeah. more, and that will be uh, de-lofting the golf club. So, uh, my 7 iron here, I'm going to hit a standard one for you in a minute, but this club has on it 34 degrees. Uh, we actually want to be hitting down on it and de-lofting that dynamically, so we can change our impact um, conditions that we actually de-loft that club a little bit more. Exactly. Right, so we're just going to get John to hit a normal shot first, so just a standard 7 iron, so we can see what kind of numbers John generates, and then we can go through a couple of things that we need to do, maybe in setup and swing, in order to, to lower that. So John's going to hit his pretty stock 7 iron here. Yep. And we'll get the launch angle and numbers on that. We'll give it a go. Okay. So really going to be looking at the, the launch angle initially uh, and a little bit of the spin rate. So the launch angle on that one was 18.8 .8 and a spin rate of, well, we'll call that 6,000. 6,000, yep. yeah. Yeah. Um, and it went 31 yards high. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about it at the moment. So let's just quickly go through setup and what we might want to do in the setup to help steepen this angle of attack. So if we think about the golf ball relative to the sternum, so that's going to be my buttons or my, or my zip, we want to move that golf ball a little bit more back behind my sternum. So relative to my stance, that's going to be a ball which is moving closer to my back foot. Now, what we often see, and John will probably agree with me here, when that ball moves a little bit more towards the back, we often see golfers move their sort of body weight with it to get themselves what they feel more comfortable. And really, the relationship between the ball and the sternum doesn't really change. Yeah. So what I actually want you to do is I want you to feel like the grip doesn't move too much, so with the butt of the club isn't moving, but I want you to move the ball a little bit more back towards your trail foot, and I actually want you to feel as if you preset a little bit more weight into your lead foot. So what that's going to do is it's going to move my sternum fractionally forward, and it's, as the ball is moving back, we, we create that sort of difference between the two. And what that will do, as John said, it's going to steepen the approach into the ball, and that's effectively going to mean that we're playing with a lower lofted club. We haven't Absolutely. changed the club here, but we've Still got a 7-iron, yep. Exactly. So what else might they want to do, John? What else is going to help them to create this sort of lower ball flight? Uh, there are other options. Uh, a tip that I actually got name dropping here from um, Paul McGinley uh, that does work very well was just actually gripping it lower down the handle. So he tries to get it so his index finger of his right hand, uh, being a right-handed golfer, is actually on the steel of the shaft. So he's a good two to three inches down the handle. What that's doing is actually meaning there's more tilt forwards from his hips, and that means the shoulders are actually working on a steeper axis. That again means that we're hitting more downwards into the golf ball and again de-lofting this golf club. Exactly. So what else that might do is if we effectively use a club which is a bit shorter, which we are doing by going down the handle, we're probably going to reduce the speed of the club. Absolutely, yeah. And if we reduce the speed of the club, we reduce the speed that's in the golf ball. One of the things that will create height 
in the golf shot is how fast the ball comes off the club face. If the ball is coming off slower, it will be rising for a short period of time, therefore it won't reach quite as, yeah. as high an angle. I mean, you get that, that real amateur tip that most people say to each other, swing it slow into the wind, exactly. and, and some of that obviously is very true because we're taking the speed off it. Exactly. Right, so we're going to put John on the spot now. Okay. We'll put him under a bit of pressure. So we're going to get you to set up, John, with the ball a bit further back. Yep. Preset a little bit more weight forward. We're going to get you to go down the handle. And just the last thing, as we mentioned there, just going to put a little bit less speed into the golf swing. Let me okay. see if we can reduce the, the launch angle, which was 18.8. Uh, 18 18 18 6,000 spin. Okay, so we're going to see. So I've moved the ball position back. I've kept my sternum, and sternum location ahead of the ball. And I've got a little bit more pressure onto my lead leg. And as we were just talking about, I'm going to grip that club a little down the handle. So I'm actually creating a little bit more tilt forwards from my hips. So right. let's give that a whirl. Press, pressure's on now. Okay. Okay, so visually we can see that's a much, much lower ball flight. Yeah. So the launch angle went from 18.8 .8 down to 13.7. Yep. Spin rate came down by probably 500, 500. RPM, yep. and the max height was 31 yards down to 17 yards. So really quite big differences there. Um, but what you'll notice though is most of those changes that we made were setup changes, which is good because it means you don't really have to mess around with changing your swing. You don't want to think about playing or face or that kind of thing. That's quite, that's quite risky. If you can make these changes in setup, that's going to be a big advantage. Now, one of the things that you will notice when you're in practice is the ball, fl the ball may travel a different distance through the air. Yeah, absolutely. Getting used to your, your distances, your numbers, when you're hitting these shots. Um, you'll definitely notice less carry distance. What you should notice, however, depending on conditions, is a little bit more run on exactly. landing. Exactly. So really quite an important shot to learn. Um, if you are going to play in the wind, um, at some point in your golfing career, you are going to get some tricky conditions. Um, if you're a fan of Lynx golf, this might be a shot that you're already kind of practicing and working towards. But certainly, the best golfers in the world are the ones who have the lowest handicaps, generally have a really good way of controlling the ball flight. If we can control the ball flight and get some control over it, we can generally manage our way around the course better. Definitely. So, I hope that helps. Hopefully, there's some real practical stuff that you can take to the range. As we said there, distance is often different to your normal swing, so a bit of practice, figure out how far the ball's going. When you feel comfortable with it, take it to the course, and hopefully, you'll be able to battle those windy conditions much, much better. Great. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate your help. Thank you very much for coming down. Uh, if you're ever in the area, pop down to Drayton Golf Club, a lovely place. Uh, maybe get even in this fantastic swinging studio. So thanks again to John for his time this morning. Thank you for watching the video. If you've got any comments, you can post those in the boxes down below. There is a like button down there also. If you did like the video, please click that. It really does help me. And if you haven't done already, then please subscribe to my channel. There is a link in the description box which will allow you to do just that. Okay, so thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again next time.